We are talking about the 10 things that you need to stop doing in Microsoft Fabric today. All right, welcome to Chris B. I'm my name is Chris Wagner, and today we're going to be going over the top 10 things that you need to stop doing right now in Microsoft Fabric. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know how, what you think about things. And if you want early access to this content for as low as $5, you can become a member and get early access to all these videos. All right, what are we talking about here? We're talking about 10, 10, 10 things that we need to stop doing inside of Microsoft Fabric today, all right? So number one, number one thing you're gonna start doing is you're gonna start, you're gonna stop treating Fabric like it's some sort of Power BI Plus type thing, okay? Right, and what does that mean? Well, that means, if practically speaking, we're gonna do two things. Number one, we're gonna start using the, the uh, fabric experience down in the bottom here, where you go to, you switch over to fabric, it gives you this great new UI, and it uh, we're gonna adjust by, instead of going to app.powerbi.com, we're, we're gonna start going to fabric.microsoft.com. That's gonna to default to this great experience for us. Right, so we're really tuned in on building and working in Fabric and not just building out reports and not just being a Power BI plus experience. All right. Number two, number two thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stop building everything inside of one workspace, okay? So gone are these workspaces with hundreds or thousands of objects in that workspace. In fact, didn't you see Microsoft like put a cap on the number of objects you can have in a workspace? Like it's a bad idea to have too much in a workspace. So start breaking it up. You're gonna break it up into the following uh, workspaces. Number one, you're gonna have reports. All of your reports are gonna go into one workspace for your analysts and analytics engineers to work on. Number two, you're gonna build a workspace that's just for your semantic models, okay? So this is where your tabular editor code is gonna be pushed out to and you're gonna deploy your semantic models here. You're gonna work with that. And number three workspace, this is gonna be your fabric data engineering workspaces where people are gonna be building their pipelines, building their, their bronze medallion, uh, medallion architecture, all that stuff. And then number four, you're gonna have a workspace that's dedicated to data scientists. If you're in a large organization, you're gonna you're even going to add in some flavor for departmental or domain breakouts. So you're gonna have those four different uh, types of workspaces broken out across each of your domains. Okay. And while we're here, number three thing you're gonna start doing or stop doing in Fabric is you're gonna stop skipping over the medallion architecture, okay? So it, this is very simple. This is very simple. We're gonna, we're gonna be, uh, ah, <laughs> we are going to be, what is going on with my screen? There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we are going to be keeping our, our raw data in our bronze environment right here, right? So bronze is your raw data. You know, light transformations only if that, this is your raw basic data. You're gonna add in all of your business logic is gonna be in your silver data. And then we're gonna scroll over to your bronze or gold data. This is gonna be your star schema model data for your semantic models to hit. You're gonna materialize the data. You're not just gonna put views on it. It's gonna actually be, be be facts and dimensions that you materialize in your gold layer, okay? Number four. All right, S stop letting everyone build semantic models, all right? That semantic model workspace right here, you're only gonna give the people who have tabular editor three licenses access to this workspace and, and they're gonna publish the semantic model or models Hopefully it's just one, but maybe you have a couple uh, that are at, for your enterprise inside of that semantic model workspace. They're gonna manage it with tabular editor and gone are the days. We're gonna bar the days of thousands of semantic models that, that people all across your organization are creating and using and every report is looking different. You're gonna get to one source of truth, one set of data, and that is gonna be your, your number four thing that we're looking at.
All right, number five. What are we talking about? We're talking about ca capacity management. The number five thing you're going to stop doing is stop ignoring your capacities. What You're paying for this stuff. This is not just like, you know, free for all, do whatever. You're going to be paying for this stuff, and you need to know what's going on inside of your capacities so you can manage and understand what's happening. Like, for example, whoop, boo, this spike in our capacity metrics app right there. Uh, who the heck was it? Well, the nice thing about the capacity metric app is it allows me to easily go in and see. Come on, get my zoom right. Oh, it's the data bard workspace. So uh, this is Jared uh, Keen, the, the data bard. Uh, if you want to know what he was doing to cause this spike here, head over to the data bard Power BI YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you like to subscribe to his channel because he's going to be showing you what the heck he did that caused this. It's pretty interesting. Um, all right, let's keep going. <sighs> Number six, what are we going to start doing? We are going to, uh, and, and this is a big deal, we're back to data engineering. We are going to lock down the only place you're going to be putting in business logic and transformations is going to be in your silver layer, okay? So gone are your DAX calculated columns. Gone are your Power Query loads into your semantic models. Gone are all of those different places where if you let chaos reign, an analyst has to look at each layer looking for where there could be an issue. And if you have combo, oh my gosh, it's a freaking nightmare. You're going to simplify your life. You're going to simplify this world. You're going to move all of your business logic changes into the silver layer. You're going to stop putting them anyplace else. Business logic in silver, modeling transformations in gold. That's it. All right. The data God has spoken. All right, number seven, we're gonna start treating data governance like it's your problem, like you like you care about future you. Because if you don't have data governance in place today, you're gonna need it tomorrow. And so today is the best day to get started with your data governance. The one like catalog portal that's inside of Fabric is an amazingly easy place to get in and to start understanding what's happening inside of your environments. Click on the Govern tab. You get to see all sorts of metrics about your stuff. Go through the tutorial, learn more about what's going on inside of your capacities and start right now. And number eight, while I'm here, while I'm in the governance and explore, what you're going to do is you're going to stop creating the 40,000th 40, 40, sales report. Because I know your company has 40,000 sales reports. It's insane the number of sales reports that you have. I want you to work towards one, right? Strive for one. Maybe you go to two and maybe you have five, whatever it is. But like 40,000 is way too many. Get down, minimize, 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 simplify your life. Make this world easier for people to work with data and analytics because if you give them 40,000 uh, reports, you're just going to confuse 40,000 people, all right? Number nine, stop chasing, stop it, stop it, stop chasing every new feature that's out there. Use, you know, and by... How do, how do you do that? Well, it's right here. It's right here. You have your favorite objects that are inside of Fabric. You start using those, and you stick with using them. These are the ones you're going to use over and over again. Um, and if you find you're not using something over and over again, yeet it. Get it out of there, all right? We don't need it anymore, all right? But if you go and look at all the, all the items out here, you don't need to use all of these things. These aren't, you know, um, uh, something for you. And, in fact... Like, be prudent and understandable, right? Like, maybe maybe Apache Airflow is a big thing that you're going to start using in 2026, and this is going to become a favorite for yours. But I got to tell you something. If you don't have a need for Apache Airflow, don't use Apache Airflow. It's very simple, right? 
keep your life as simple as you possibly can. Identify the patterns that you're going to use and then just do those things. Stop chasing everything new that's out there unless you have a practical business reason for that thing. All right. And then number 10, wait a minute, this is the wrong view. Number 10, Microsoft, this is what you're going to stop doing. Stop, stop it. Microsoft Fabric isn't going to solve all of your data culture problems. Stop thinking that it is. Fabric's this great new tool. It's got a whole bunch of new features and options. I love it. Right? I've got like 2,400 videos out on Microsoft Fabric and Power BI and all that good stuff. It's fantastic. It's, it's great. You should use it. But it's not going to change the relationship your organization has with data. That's going to come from you. You're going to need to help breed and foster a good data culture inside your organization. Help people out. Show people what it means to work with data. Show people like how they can best consume information. Show them how to question things, how to dig into things, right? In general, just be a person, help people out, help build that data culture. Don't think that tools are gonna like overcome what people can do. There's no AI that's gonna help you with the data culture. That's something that you have to do yourself. All right. Thank you for joining me today. My name's Chris Widener, this is Chris BI. I hope you found something useful and likable and I hope you enjoyed this. If I missed something that you should stop doing, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear what I missed as part of this. Otherwise, if you haven't liked, subscribe, you know, do all that good stuff. You know, I always forget about that stuff. But here's the deal. I want you, you, I want you to have the best day ever. Peace. Holy cow. There's a lot here, huh? I know, I get it. It's like all I do, and I, I sometimes have problems keeping up with stuff. You need help with this stuff, I get it. Head over to bakertilly.com slash digital. Click on, I need some information. Put Chris Wagner inside of it, uh, the form. I'll get notified myself or like what, like someone on my team will reach out to you right away. We'll make sure you get the help you need. But if you think you can do this, and, and I think you can, I got two videos here to help you out.